welcome to everyone who's joined us today. To get started, we're just going to make sure um, that everyone can hear us and that the audio is working correctly. So if you could go ahead and comment in the chat box, just to make sure that you can hear us. So if you can hear me talking, if you could go ahead and comment in the chat box below, then that would be great. All right, perfect. So thank you all for joining me today. My name is Sabrina Watson, and I'm a marketing specialist here at Alliance Benefit Group Rocky Mountain. Today we will be listening to Christopher Barlow. Chris is the Managing Director of KnowHow 401k, which you may recognize as ABG's Sales Champion Program. And we will provide you with more information on how to receive access to this free sales development program in the chat box below. Without further delay, I will hand the time over to you, Chris. Sabrina, thank you very much. And I want to thank everyone for taking time uh, to view today's presentation. It's the third of a three-part series. Uh, that um, first one was preparing a plan to accomplish your goals. <clears throat> the second one was prospecting and profiling, bringing your plan alive. And now you've gotten to the point where you're positioned to make a sales presentation, hopefully win, and uh, in so doing, execute implementation and uh, ongoing service activities. So Thank you for taking time, especially those that have been uh, part of all of our uh, webcasts. And I, I do want to thank um, Sabrina for all her coordination and leadership on the webcast series, Fran Mulgrew and Sean Orham as well, all of ABGRM. I, I appreciate the opportunity they've given to me to speak to you, and I appreciate the uh, partnership uh, that we have to uh, in, in, uh, enhance uh, you. Uh, bring as much value as possible to you and uh, all the good uh, things that you do for your plan sponsor and plan participant clients. Uh, as you know, uh, the time that you're allotted during the sales presentation is, is seems to be getting shorter and shorter all the time. And, you know, depending upon the value of the plan that you're pursuing, the amount of time that you previously put in to get to the uh, point of being able to deliver a sales presentation. I mean, it's pretty, it's, I mean, when you break it down on how much uh, per hour you're making here, it's pretty substantial. So you got to be as effective as possible. Do what you can do to know uh, how the uh, flow, if you will, of the sales presentations uh, going to take. This is a, a cool tool you can uh, get online it's, uh, through mindmeister.com, M-I-N-D-M-E-I-S-T-E-R.com. It's a software program, fairly inexpensive, but it allows you to create flowcharts. And um, I think flowcharts are awesome because you can visualize your process, not only for preparation purposes, but also to go back and, and edit and make sure that uh, they're appropriate. So, you know, when you take a look at setting up the sales presentation, there's three main components to it, <clears throat> organizing, getting prepared, practicing with partners the sales presentation the actual delivery of the sales presentation and then all the follow-up uh, that takes place afterwards so sales presentations you know begin um you know you can you can take the long-term view as soon as that plan entered as a prospect into your database you had all full intent of uh, presenting to them someday, but clearly it, it was through your prospecting efforts that uh, you narrowed down the universe of prospects to those few uh, that uh, you're gonna be building your business with. It is uh, it is the payoff of all that time that you spent uh, developing uh, that uh, cold lead into the hot prospect. And uh, the sales presentation may not be a one and done, it may be executed over multiple rounds and it's all about helping decision makers make sure that they're fulfilling uh, their fiduciary responsibility uh, in uh, selecting the best uh, for their plan participants 
think of those great sales presentations uh, you've participated in, you've witnessed over the years. Uh, it's really, I, I consider myself to be a professional salesperson and I, I have uh, no, no problems with any negative connotations of the term sales. It is what it is. <clears throat> and I love watching uh, other professional salespeople and participating. And, and uh, if you're ever present to me as a salesperson, you might find out that I'll actually critique you afterwards too. It's kind of a, uh, a, an obnoxious part of my personality. But think about, you know, those great sales presentations. You know, what was it about them that made them your favorite? Uh, you were involved, right? You know that this uh, person is professional. Uh, it was c quite clear that they were ready for you, that they practiced, right? Uh, within the workshop that Sabrina and Fran can give you access to is a, a very simple outline, an organizer called the Sales Presentation Organizer. And uh, it allows you to be as effective as possible. It allows you to take advantage of all those conversations, great notes you've taken. You know the priority points that you need to bring out. Just make sure that you clear the deck as effective as possible uh, with that short amount of time uh, that you have. Helps you to also communicate effectively with your partners. They'll better understand what their role is going to be not only during the sales presentation, but ongoing. Organize uh, all partners, uh, debrief with them afterwards, take notes on it, uh, prepare next step, you know, win or lose and uh, archive for future reference, whether in an ongoing service perspective to making sure you said, uh, doing what you said you were gonna do, uh, to uh, having great notes uh, if you're not chosen and a plan comes up for bid again. So these are the components of that uh, sales presentation organizer. I hope that you open up and print off and take a look at it. You know, who's gonna be the company representatives? Have you talked to them? Are they all internal? Are they bringing in an external people? You know, it's about uh, talking to them and understanding what's important to them, making sure that all decision makers uh, have prioritized the same uh, list of uh, important issues. Um, you know, who on your team's gonna be there? Uh, and anybody that attends has to have, have a role and speak during the presentation. Um, so understand who they are, uh, your uh, external partners uh, from ABG, you know, who are they? Uh, make sure that you've contacted them well in advance, that they've got the date reserved in their calendars. Uh, conduct a review call with them and practice the sales presentation. Uh, one of the great aspects of, of my job is speaking to advisors all over the nation every day. And I talk to them about their sales presentations and ask them, you know, uh, either before or after, you know, about their preparation. It's the consistency of those that take the time, an hour, two hours, just to dry run the sales presentation. It's very consistent amongst those advisors uh, that continually shine. And uh, I'm, I suspect you understand this about ABG, that when you bring them into a sales presentation, uh, they don't want to be the organization that shines. They're going to certainly put their best foot forward and represent themselves quite well. Uh, but they realize that you're the reason why they're there. They want you to shine and uh, they want you to be the reason why everyone is chosen out there. So uh, make sure that everybody sticks to their uh, lane, so to speak. Uh, they should be prepared, all your outside partners prepared to answer any questions about their respective discipline. And you're answering questions about the service you deliver to plan sponsor, plan participants, and other features of your service model out there, right? Don't allow anyone else to talk about what you do uh, because you want clarity in the decision maker's mind as to whose relationship you know, they are. They're your relationship. So priority points. Remember, we talked about this, if you were with us in the last webcast, about actually asking for the assistance of the decision maker to help you know, prepare you to deliver the sales presentation with that final discovery uh, meeting question. Prioritize for me what will be important to discuss at our next meeting when I present my recommendation. And if you know there are other decision makers, internal or external, make sure you clear the deck uh, with a follow-up question, would all other decision makers agree? 
with that prioritization. You know, AV technology is awesome. It can kill you too, right? You just got to be prepared. Uh, one of my best sales presentations, most memorable, biggest asset wins, uh, technology failed. And uh, uh, as we were beginning the presentation, never to uh, never to come alive again, and we had to uh, uh, resort to plan B. And I think it was uh, quite a, uh, impressive to the decision makers that we didn't let it, you know, uh, create any uh, obstacles for us. But just make sure your technology is working. Uh, the day before uh, a sales presentation, call them up, confirm. That's professional. Uh, you know, you'd be amazed at how few advisors want to make this call. And I think you know why. I, don't, I think you know that they don't want to upset the apple cart. You know, they don't want to be told, no, we got to change the meeting, whatever it happens to be. Uh, you would hope that the decision maker would call you to change the meeting if it needed to be. So, you know, get in there and, and be proactive, be professional. It's how you get to work with them in a long-term service. And again, if you have a technology uh, that is going to be supplied by the decision maker, make sure all's good. Uh, before you uh, uh, get on out there and, and assume things. So uh, you you know this uh, viscerally. Uh, you can certainly see these things uh, on the screen here, but I'm, I'm an absolute believer that uh, simplicity is, uh, is the way of uh, going about things, not complicating things. And when you really boil down to what it is that you have control over, I think it's, it's as simple as your attitude and your activities. Um, a great book uh, that was given to me uh, is the book written by Bill Glass, Expect to Win. And uh, a common denominator, I talked earlier, and I, I talk a lot about these common denominators of top people. You know, the, I talked about the preparation for the sales presentation. Well, top, top people know they're going to win. They go in knowing they're going to win. The confidence that it, they exude is, is overwhelming, right? It's a common denominator. And the activities that you execute, I mean, you're in control of these activities, whether it was prospecting and profiling and partner consultation, practice, practice, practice. You can enhance the probability of success, accomplishing your goals by executing your activities. So the sales presentation outline is going to give you the opportunity to kind of outline out, script out um, the opening body, close, follow up, knowing that you're the conductor of the sales presentation orchestra, if you will. And every member of the sales team, whether they're internal or external, is going to play a role. And you're there to make sure that everybody's on the same page. You practiced it, now you're delivering it. Coming into the sales presentation, I encourage you to do a time check so we make sure that uh, you know everybody's going to um, do their part, not only to sit in their seats for the allotted time, but if you if you're not the first group to present, maybe you're second or third, uh, and the first group went over their time, don't let the decision makers make up that lost time on uh, your uh, dime, so to speak. So do that time check. Make sure that uh, you're going to give uh, get the a lot of time that uh, you were told you were going to get. And when you walked in, I know that there was a lot of handshaking going on and adjustments and people sitting down, et cetera, et cetera. And you may have had brief uh, introductions. I think it's a good time when you start out the sales presentation. Again, you're conducting this. Introduce yourself. Just make sure that you go around the table. If you want to include everyone, including decision maker reps, great. Otherwise, it's your team members go around, explain, introduce themselves, explain what their role is in uh, managing the company retirement plan. And then the body of the sales presentation uh, this is sales 101. It's 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 very simple stuff, you know. Bridging back, making that connection uh, uh, from the last uh, conversation you had with them, outlining your recommendation, really uh, based on feedback the decision makers have been providing to you, the analysis of how you arrived at your recommendation, and then the actual timeline schedule implementation to uh, bringing it back. So some sample language, of course, <clears throat> you're all masters at this, uh, uh, the bridging back statement. Last time we talked, you know, uh, we based our presentation based on those conversations. And uh, clearing the deck again, if, if you, you're not the first uh, uh, group to present that there's been other before you, 
asking the question, are there any additional topics that my competitors have talked about that you liked and you want to make sure that we can provide as well? Important actions. Um, we're visual learners, all of us. The majority of us are visual learners, I should say that. It's a, uh, a vast majority. So anything that you can do to show the program, whether it's web demos or statements, uh, you know, have them touch these things. You know, I think that these are very important qualities. Don't, you know, make it difficult for them to see what you're talking about, uh, to be able to touch uh, uh, features of the program. Remind the decision maker that you're, you as the advisor, your job is to be the chief retirement officer for the plan. That like the other C-level uh, 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 employees at the employer, your job is to help define goals with the uh, decision maker, define the activities to achieve those goals, execute the activities, monitor the outcomes of those activities and report back uh, to refine uh, those goals and or activities, just like any other C-level employee would for their discipline. And that you're the person from the outside the organization. And you're out there waving uh, the company flag, reminding the employees what a great uh, idea they made uh, to be employed there, to have access to this great retirement program. Um, and selling the value of your team during the sales presentation that uh, you and help enhance the company's probability of profitability and long-term viability by in, uh, enhancing the retirement readiness of the plan participants out there through your ongoing service. You help the employer to manage fiduciary responsibilities if you've hired out that service or if you're providing uh, 321, 338 on your own, whatever it happens to be. Uh, you were consultative during the prospecting profiling phase. Be consultative now. I mean, it's great courage. Uh, uh, definite uh, a show of being a professional. Open it up you know, for questions during your sales presentation. Just cl uh, check for clarity. Encourage their questions throughout. And, uh, it, you know, most of these folks do want to ask the question when it comes up, so encourage it out there. And you're rolling through the body, uh, you're asking for clarity, uh, you're getting to the point now where you can, you know, think about how you're going to close this. It's going to be methodical. Uh, you're going to summarize, you're going to check for understanding uh, and make sure that all decision makers understand the features of your recommended program. Uh, again, with courage. Ask them for any questions. How does this uh, program look versus others that you've been uh, looking at? Uh, Reemphasize your sincere desire and ability of service and your genuine value of the plan uh, uh, to uh, work with plan participants. And then make sure you're, you're asking for the next step. Uh, you're the leader of the sales presentation. Keep the momentum going. Shouldn't surprise you that I'd be one that would script out closing statements. Uh, I, would, I would script out openers too, as, as you saw earlier, but the closing statement, I think what's important is that you, you can, as a professional, stay on certain solid ground. You know, how you introduce yourself to the prospect, why you, you know, why are you different? And that feeds through to the closing statement of how now you're gonna execute, you know, that purpose that you understand uh, that you provide to the plan. And, how you're going to go about doing it with the uh, uh, closing statement. Um, but uh, ask them also when you're done with your closing statement, will you let me know if my competitor offers a service that you're interested in so that we can also provide it? In, in talking to advisors and, and certainly working with plans of my own over the years, you know that there's this period of time that, that could happen uh, you know, that could exceed, like the decision maker, you walk out of them, they go, we're going to let you know within a week. And then a week goes by. And you follow up with them and they say, you know, yeah, you know, I asked Bob to kind of take over from here and to work with you. And I forwarded the email to them. And, you know, Bob's the person internally that's going to be responsible for uh, uh, operating, uh, changing over from the current provider to the new provider or putting the program in place uh, from the startup. And often, you know, they're kind of hesitant because 
not only do they feel that they're already overwhelmed with their current responsibilities and they're not paid enough, now they have to do this. If you can create an implementation, a very simple plan, and show them the prime responsibilities that have to take place in order to bring this program online and who is going to be responsible for those, they really begin to understand that their role is not as monumental as the mountain they may have made it out to be. And you know, it's during this enlightenment period that you're staying in front of the decision makers out there to you know, uh, remind them of the top issues you brought out during the sales presentation, how are you going to work with them and their employees, whatever it happens to be. You know, maybe you offered to do a, a mock employee education meeting uh, or just deliver an agenda, right, so that they can see the topics you, you'd be covering in an education meeting. Offer references, you know, right up front. Be proactive with them. Uh, if you have current plans, that's great. Uh, that's plan level. If you don't, ABG can certainly can, oh, I don't want to speak for them, but I'm sure they can't uh, look to get you references of their current clients out there, perhaps. Participant level, if you're new to 401k, you don't have any plans, you don't have any participants, remember, a 401k is nothing more than a bunch of individual investors uh, that just come together as a group through their employers. So, uh, offering up individual uh, uh, client referrals is how you can overcome that. Be prepared to, uh, in the uh, decision makers process, to determine who gets to serve the company plan that they uh, propose to you. Uh, se several final questions. Uh, just be ready for them, you know, and create an inventory of the answers uh, that that you get. Standardize them. Uh, they're, they usually uh, fall into certain categories out there. So look for the um, replay of this and you can slow it down and get these questions uh, for yourself. But, you know, when it comes to acquisition activities, uh, you know, your prospecting, profiling, sales presentations, I mean, there's a hard finish. Either you're getting the plan or you're not. Um, and hopefully you are getting the plan and you're chosen. Um, and, and then your retention activities are open-ended and move forward. But if you're not chosen, you know, uh, assuming uh, that everything was on the up and up and assuming, you know, that uh, you, you thought that they did a good job, that certainly did a great exercise of their fiduciary responsibilities and in uh, selecting uh, the new provider, you know, respond like a professional. Don't, uh, don't uh, uh, be reactive. I, I certainly had my episodes. Of, uh, of reaction that I would take back. I, I think it's important just from the get-go to re reply like a professional. Thank them for the opportunity. Uh, let them know that you realize the amount of time that they put in was substantial and they should be very proud of the decision that they made and, and move on. And ask for an exit interview. Uh, they want to reward you. They know you've spent time. Uh, have a few questions ready to go. Uh, you may not always win, but you can always improve. Conduct it as quickly as possible. It's not only for you to improve, but it's it goes along with that professional acknowledgement. There is buyer's remorse out there. There are folks that will actually um, say anything they need to do in order to win. And then when they actually have to show up and deliver what they said they were going to do, uh, the obvious uh, uh, becomes um, uh you know, effective here. So buyer's remorse is out there, but exit interviews don't need to be ex extensive. Just ask a, a few direct, honest questions. Use open-ended questions. Don't be defensive, like, why didn't you choose us? Uh, but more like, what were the reasons why you chose, you know, the victor? So here's five questions. What were the reasons why you chose the victor? What did you like most about our recommendation? What could I have done better? Under what conditions what we have been retained, chosen? Uh, retained if you lost a current client, shame on you. And how do you feel about the process your company implemented to improve the 401k plan? <clears throat> so what do you do with this? Well, you've got a, a library of information, heck of a lot more than when you, when you started out with this cold prospect. So file away, you know? Uh, think about those uh, positive changes you can make as a result of the feedback. 
but uh, this is that last opportunity perhaps until the prospect shows back up again uh, that uh, uh, you get to get value out of the time that you've spent with them. So as I mentioned, there's a hard ceiling to acquisition, but it's open-ended when it comes to retention. You know, the two phases of the 401k sales cycle you've been working through. And, and this is, and I like talking about this topic. You know who these people are. <clears throat> the program providers out there that are racing to the bottom when it comes to uh, 401k program features and things like that and really don't understand, don't care to understand about how valuable advisors are. Um, you know, in the simple logic, uh, the vast majority of employers in the United States employ less than 100 employees. And they're, they're not multinationals with satellite locations. You know, they have less than 100, vast majority of them less than 50. And they work with local professionals, uh, group health, CPAs, attorneys, you know, bankers. They're used to outsourcing disciplines of their organization to local professionals to help them to grow their business. It's, you're a natural. So those no advisor programs uh, that not only don't understand and are, uh, you know, the value of an advisor out there, I don't think them do, they're doing it themselves any good. Uh, the vast majority of, of decision makers that choose no advisor programs are startup plans. And, uh, you know, uh, second time buyers are competency conscious. Uh, as opposed to cost conscious as uh, first time buyers. So advisors, you, you're to me the, the most important aspect of this. Certainly the employer has to execute and put the plan in place. Plan participants have to participate, but you really bring it alive. You can enhance the probability of not only the plan participants retirement readiness, but the long-term company re profitability and viability. It's a wonderful role you have in the company retirement plan. This was why they took your call, right? This is the number one thing that you have control over. Um, and it's accomplishing your service, retaining the plan. That's where you accomplish your goals. So there's several uh, benefits to creating a document called the service model uh, that uh, not only you receive, but also your plan sponsor clients out there, they uh, they feel it. They they know that your focus is on them uh, to help them to accomplish their goals. It's going to eliminate any surprises, defining roles, responsibilities. Uh, they know what to expect from you. Uh, you can use this service model in a prospecting mode to distinguish yourself from other advisors out there, let alone the advisor currently on their plan. I had a, a conversation with an advisor once and they were preparing a, a sales presentation. The decision maker told them it was against them and Fidelity Direct. Sorry for using Fidelity's name. And uh, he asked, he said, so how do I compete against, you know, Fidelity out there? And I said, well, you stop thinking about how to compete against Fidelity and make Fidelity compete against you. There's things Fidelity can't do, won't do, not in their business model. Expose them, you know, and um, just make sure that, uh, you're using the service model to help answer that question decision makers have, you know, the why you, why should we choose you? Why are you different than all the other advisors that have propositioned us, let alone our current advisor out there? In the workshop that uh, Fran and Sabrina can get you access to and Sean, uh, there's a sample uh, 401k service model in the e-toolbox. And uh, take a look at it. It's the visualization of your service model. You remember what I talked about earlier? We like to show, we learn, uh, learn by seeing things. And you have these specific service activities uh, which are consistent with what you spelled out in your uh, service model and you color coded them. And what I'd encourage you to do is sit down with um, uh, Sabrina, Fran and Sean and build a service model uh, that depicts uh, their uh, uh, service actions as well uh, many of the actions that uh, are undertaken by uh, ABG Rocky Mountain are, compli are calendar oriented and uh, specific so they can uh, fill this in nicely of a, a Christmas tree look to it after a while. Uh, but the components of your service model, uh, and again, think about using this in the context of prospecting as well as delivery of your service. 
you have your beliefs, your focus, you know, that you can share, that you can continually stare at. Service activities, uh, you know, the few activities. You don't have to be overwhelmed with this. I'll, I'll reinforce that throughout the remainder of this presentation. And then also the obligations of the plan sponsor. It's, it's not, they don't get off the hook just for sponsoring and maybe uh, contributing to the plan. If they want the best out of you, they got to create the environment conducive to allow you to be your best. And that's what obligations of the employer is all about. So when you list out the service activities, what you'll specifically do for the plan sponsor, plan participant is next, you know, for the plan sponsor, daily for any inquiry, uh, monthly, we're going to make a proactive outgoing call to you just to check in. Uh, every three months, as part of our monthly call, we're going to email to you an investment performance report and briefly go through that. And then part of our annual trustee meeting, uh, we're going to bring in ABG to talk about all compliance aspects, record keeping aspects, uh, benchmarking, those good kind of things. Plan participant, they have to feel free to contact us uh, at will. Uh, I know you have quarterly entry into the plan, so we'll be on site whenever there's uh, newly eligibles. Uh, we do want to have an annual state of the plan meeting, and when we're on site on an annual basis, we want as many one-on-ones uh, with the employees as possible. And obligations of the plan sponsor, uh, you have to help develop goals for the plan. Uh, uh, tell us everything going on, uh, not only now, facilitate answers to our questions, but you know, share with us any in information that, about the future of the company that we should uh, be prepared for out there. Um, open lines of communication with those other local professionals that uh, you rely upon, CPAs, ERISA counsel, CPA auditor, whatever it happens to be, and then please supply ongoing feedback uh, for us out there. Um, as I said, I think it's a great idea to, for you to contemplate uh, developing a service model with ABG. Uh, the more you guys uh, are on the same page and singing from the same hymn book, the better for everybody out there. So you have specific actions that you're going to do once when it comes from a service perspective. And then you're going to have those actions that you execute on an ongoing basis. So those one implementation, you know, you got to get off to, to the right st uh, start. You do what you said you were going to do during the decision-making phase of this, right? The first thing you do is thank them. Get that note card off. You know, let them know they made a great decision, just as you may have done in a professional acknowledgement when you didn't win. Thank them for the opportunity and that you're going to be working. Look forward to working with the internal uh, uh, employee to get things off and running, those kind of things. And, and I do encourage you, if they hadn't made it part of uh, when they called you or met with you to tell you won and why you won, ask them. Ask them why you won. And um, I think it's it's good uh, feedback to have. Uh, make sure that uh, you delivered what you wanted to deliver, those types of things. And uh, I think it's also, you know, the more that they uh, uh, congratulate you for their decision, I think the more they pat themselves on the back and insulate you. Uh, remember, when one wins, another loses so to speak. So there's potential for that loser to uh, come back at you, come uh, back to the decision maker, try to change their uh, decision out there. So I always knew once I, I ran ads, you know, uh, and the ads were, you know, ABC company is pleased to announce we've chosen uh, to manage our plan, that type of thing. I knew, and I asked their permission, of course, and I got their logos and good things like that. But I knew once the ad ran, that was it. There was no turning back. Uh, they made the decision, no matter how good uh, competitor complaints may have been, they're, they're in, locked in. So it was good. And, you know, the, they liked uh, the ad, too, because they wanted their employees to get confirmation. They wanted candidate employees uh, to see the ad and to know that they were offering a competitive program out there. Uh, I uh, scheduled a welcome call. As an advisor, I scheduled the welcome call. Uh, when I was a wholesaler working with advisors, I knew the value of this call. So if the advisor didn't bring it up, I scheduled the call as the wholesaler. And I got every interested party together, representative, had decision maker. I had myself. I had 
the advisor, if I was working with one as a, as a wholesaler, I had my TPA, I had uh, uh, any record keeper separate. I, I had everybody introduced everyone to, to the other. We got to know each other. We talked about what needed to be done, who was gonna be responsible for what, and I was responsible for creating uh, the uh, Im Im improvement plan, if you will. And uh, there is a sample again of one in the e-tool box, uh, but you know, we talked about the timeline of, of what needed to be done, and I kept this updated. We had an update call, 15 minutes every Monday, everybody on the phone, and you'd be amazed, and I'm sure you can understand, you know, that uh, planned uh, conversions, takeovers, go a heck of a lot better when all partners are communicating effectively. And, and right up front, ABG is gonna wanna take a look at that document, make sure it's in compliance, make sure it's reflecting uh, the goals of the employer, uh, that type of thing. I encourage you, uh, meet with that uh, representative, representatives of the employer that are already responsible for conducting employee meetings um, and learn from their best practices, execute their best practices. You know, current methods, modes of employee education, whether in person or group, one-on-one, -on -one, size of the audience, day of the week, time of day, do they like webcasts, those things. Um, discover any hurdles uh, that you may have to overcome, including uh, language, uh, bringing in interpreters. Uh, discover centers of influence amongst the employees. Make sure that they clearly understand the plan. Make sure you've answered all their questions. If other employees rely upon them uh, to influence their decision, you want to make sure that they have accurate information. If the company has uh, satellite locations and they have a manager at each, uh, get on that weekly manager call, or if they come into town, do that train the trainer. Make sure they are absolutely confident with the program, answer their questions, so that they can confidently deliver the message uh, to the uh, satellite employees out there. Um, development of an investment committee, I think is one of those great acts that you alone can uh, deliver. There's wonderful information online about developing investment committees. Just Google, Google the phrase. Uh, but investment committees can be staffed by, you know, employees whose job it is, you know, to be part of this, like uh, the owner, the CFO, whatever. And then uh, other representatives of the employees. It's nice when you get the, the broad array out there and ongoing management of the investment committee is a great role for you um, and what the uh, responsibilities are. Um, many advisors will hire out or have uh, uh, 321, 338 services associated with the plan. So whether or not that service provider is bringing, developing a, an investment policy statement, or if you're not deploying those programs, you're developing whatever it happens to be, Google the term about investment policy statements one of my favorite resources is 401khelpcenter.com. Uh, they've got a, a, a resource uh, uh, called uh, uh, Wisdom. Click through that, you'll see all the directory topics and uh, they have one specifically for investment policy statements. Lots of um, examples of investment policy statements in the uh, Collected Wisdom section of that. <clears throat> Think about employee education. Uh, that it's it's a uh, you know a stage, um, depending upon the type of plan, whether it's a startup or a takeover, there could be six different types of employee education meetings. Imagine you're in the sales presentation and you mentioned this. You know, our team has the understanding that there's six distinct types of employee education meetings, depending upon if it's a startup plan or a takeover like yours is. You know, that's that's good stuff. You know, so you're preparing for the enrollment meeting. Uh, get the letter out from the CEO. There's a sample one with an e-tool box. And it's not only there to uh, give credence and, you know, um, uh, credibility, if you will, to you and to what's coming up, the enrollment meeting, but also to remind folks to bring in their latest statement, to bring in the beneficiary, social security numbers, that good kind of stuff, to uh, facilitate um, uh, the um, uh, the um, uh, conversation out there. I like to um, have open uh, openers in um, uh, 
for the enrollment meetings. And the reason why was, you know, folks are going to be coming in from all different aspects of the enterprise. They were interrupted. Uh, there might have been a degree of importance, whatever. They could be frustrated. They have to sit through this thing. Um, I wanted to get everybody focused on the same message. So no matter who we are or where we come from, no matter what job we have, uh, there's going to come a moment in time when we no longer care to or are able to generate income from our labors. And we call that moment in time the beginning of our retirement years. And every moment thereafter, the quality of our life will be dependent upon how well we planned and saved, you know, while we were working. So I wanted everyone to get focused on that moment in time type of theme associated with it. And then I launched from there, you know, uh, about uh, thanking the employer, uh, thanking my partners, thanking the employees for sitting through and listening to us out there. But, uh, you know, 401k is much more than just retirement. And many, many employees uh, use 401k, whether, whatever your opinion of it is, uh, to fund other life choices, whether it's uh, advanced schooling or, uh, you know, a, a new job or whatever it happens to be. It's, it's, it's just what it is. And uh, so have that ready as well. In the e-tool box, you'll see a sample uh, uh, enrollment meeting timeline and investment map. If you're mapping from an existing plan, converting to the new program, and you're mapping assets, have a nice picture. Record keepers can prepare this kind of document for you, uh, but just for uh, illustrative purposes, you've got the timeline of activities that take place in order to bring the new program online, and then how the assets will be mapped over. Uh, just some common employee education messages you know, always remind the folks about investing basics. Uh, they need it. Um, uh, you, you've seen the reports as well as I have, you know, what, what people think uh, a stock is or what a people think a bond is out there. You know, talk about the realities of retirement planning, you know, good news and bad news about retirement. Uh, you could live as long in retirement as you did working. That's the good news. The bad news is you could live as long in retirement as you did working, you know. You could outlive the amount of money that you set aside. Uh, most folks don't have adequate savings. Typical Social Security check doesn't provide the same level of financial comfort as a regular paycheck. You know, what's most important variable in building retirement wealth? You know, how much you save, how well your investments do, or how much time you give yourself. I'll save you some time. It's time, right? Roll in, roll on. You can encourage roll-ins that can lower the cost for this program that give the employees, you know, access not only to lower cost investment choices, but perhaps loans, hardship withdrawals, things that aren't afforded through an IRA rollover. Always about saving a percentage, not a specific dollar amount. As their compensation hopefully increases, they save more and more to match their lifestyle. Uh, they get to get as much of the free money as possible. You know, the automatic saving through payroll deduction, it's, it's, it's why uh, uh, folks can uh, become ready to retire. It's that automatic payroll deduct is the magic. Creditor protection of qualified assets. Anyone over 55, you kind of got to take a different perspective of them, right? And how you talk to them versus a 25-year-old. Good news and bad news, like I, I went about before and Many folks think they can't afford to save, so I got tired of, of telling them they, they can't afford not to save, and I wanted to show them a picture. So in the e-toolbox, again, you have a worksheet, and, and this is um, a live worksheet, so you can affect it. There's two tabs uh, to it. Uh, the uh, assumption tab, you can change things like the company name. Uh, you can change the withholding savings rate, but it's got an internal future value calculator. So it'll take all your input and show in the analysis the effect of take-home pay uh, by saving zero or four, 12 percent, whatever your choice, and then future valuing those dollars out as well. So kind of help them to overcome uh, the uh, issue they may think they have about not being able to save. And uh, if they are 
uh, able uh, to qualify for the uh, savers credit, uh, they can, if they're um, oh, uh, the savers credit is a tax credit. It will not increase a refund, but it can decrease if you owe. Uh, so if you have a, a lower income uh, participant, you may want to introduce them to the savers credit out there. Just some employee meeting don'ts. I know these are obvious, but you'd be surprised. Um, it's obvious that you're gonna get cross-selling if you work with them, if you build trust with them. If you build a relationship with them, they will seek you out, right? I don't know about the necessity of priming the pump during these uh, employee meetings, right? Uh, remember, there are some no advisor uh, competitors of yours out there that anytime they're given the choice uh, to demean advisors, one thing they talk about is all they're gonna do is stand up in front of your employees and try to sell them something else, right? So don't, don't take that bait. Talking over their heads, rem remember uh, your certain understanding of financials, financial markets far exceeds that of the lay person out there, no matter who they, who they think they are and what they think they know, this is a full-time job. And we can um, get lost in jargon so we got to watch that. Be as uh, effective a communicator as you possibly can, uh, working with your audience, knowing who they are and how you need to speak with them. Uh, you'll hear this, of course, when you uh, uh, early probe the prospect about their current plan and the current advisor. You know, we saw them when we signed up, but haven't since. You know, it's incredible to me. Uh, in order for you to accomplish your goals, you have to keep your plans. It's as simple as that. And there's some things that are out of your control. You know, companies can merge, businesses restructure. The person that brought you in could leave, right? Uh, there's things that you can overcome. You can overcome these issues if you're servicing the plan, if you become indispensable to the success of the plan. And you know your, pros your clients are being called every day. What are they telling them? You know, this is how <laughs> they allowed you in, right? that you began the conversation because the current advisor was disappointing them. So what are they telling your competition about you? Are they allowing them to talk or are they shutting them down? Uh, this is what one advisor told me that uh, uh, their uh, current client of theirs tells advisors that call, you know, plan has its issues, but when we have an issue, it gets addressed. You know, I know they're going above and beyond. They're outstanding. How would you react if you were the cold caller advisor and this was the reply you had? You know, hopefully you'd, you'd say, well, what would need to change, you know, in order for me to have a chance to compete? But uh, I think I would ask, do you know any other companies that are looking? And I take these folks off the list, or at least I wouldn't be calling them all that much. You know, and like I've said several times, 401k is perfect business for advisors when you look at all the, the features of what it means for you. You know, every payday at the company is a payday for you. Uh, you have the ability to incubate future clients through uh, tax deferred growth. Uh, as you build trust relationships, they approach you uh, to help with other aspects of their financial life. Uh, many advisors uh, sold their first 401k because they were tired of losing top clients out the back door to the advisor that was serving their 401k plan. And a lot of advisors, I shouldn't say a lot, I, the vast majority. When you ask them about benefits they get out of serving the 401k market, they'll honestly tell you that they know that this is a way for them to give back to their community in a very time efficient way of, of reaching out to a number of folks effectively out there. Um, I talked in uh, our earlier uh, webcast, in the planning webcast, that you can break it down and project out revenue and project out the amount of time that it takes for you to build your book of 401k plans and you can assess a return on investment. Well, you can do the same thing when it comes to servicing your plans out there. And um, I'm, I, I uh, entered uh, some of the uh, analysis work of, um, of working with the PAM worksheet. And again, this is a tool within the uh, workshop that uh, ABG can give you access to. And you can project out, you know, total revenue. And uh, you're gonna have to, to bear with me here and slow down this recording when you get it. But 
if you looked at these activities, and these are the same activities I've talked about throughout this presentation, that how much time it takes you to prep, deliver, and follow up on your plan sponsor and your plan participant activities. Uh, I believe that per plan, it's 56 hours a year. In over five years, if you were bringing on two new plans a year, over five years, there's going to be 30 periods of time that you are acquiring and serving your plans, right? In, in the first year, it was two plans. And the second year, it was four. And the third year, it was six. And the fourth year, it was eight. Fifth year, it was 10. And sums to 30. So these 30 annual service programs over five years, each of them took 56 hours. So you prep, prep, delivered, and followed up your service activities for your 10 plans, right, 1,680 hours. And in the PAM worksheet, I calculated, projected on a conservative perspective, uh, that uh, you had netted netted almost 108,000. And so backing the numbers into each other, $64.25 net per hour. And oh, by the way, Bureau, Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, shows for securities, commodities, financial service sales agents, that the average annual hourly rate is almost $31 an hour. So it's good business. Referrals, hey, as your success grows, uh, you'll be getting more referrals as a result of uh, satisfied clients talking to peers. And, um, you know, I had an advisor that asked uh, a prospect if they wouldn't mind writing out a referral, and they did, and uh, he shared it with me. So I, I'd encourage you to read through this when you get the recording and uh, take a look at it. And uh, think to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if my clients, you know, talked about uh, me? like they're talking about Nick here. Um, I'm a big fan of becoming indispensable to your clients and being creative and thinking of ways that you can do it in non-time consuming ways. Be as efficient as possible out there, right? Uh, but program providers are going to continually bring on new technologies which have the opportunity to lower cost over time. And the marketplace is going to be, continue to be commoditized. This is almost a $6 trillion marketplace. So there's a lot of the innovation taking place all the time. It's on its way to $10 trillion, you know, over the next 10 years or so. So there's plenty of reasons why innovation should take place. One thing that I wanted to do was to build a resource for my plan sponsors that could be considered an owner's manual for the plan. And I got this idea after speaking with a prospect during a discovery meeting. Uh, and I, I saw at their office, in their bookcase, I saw these three ring binders. And I was curious. And I, I asked her, I said, would any of those three ring binders in your bookcase uh, be like the owner's manual for a specific process within your organization? She said, yeah, basically. I said, that makes a lot of sense because that owner's manual, you can have process procedures uh, written in there so that you can you know, review them, edit them, you can train to them. Uh, well, I want to build the owner's manual uh, for your retirement plan so that you have a central depository for every document, any question that comes up, you know where to go for it. And I'm going to be the one that keeps uh, the uh, owner's manual up for you. And it's going to contain everything that you need uh, to run your plan. The front page, again, what you're updating is the service log. Uh, you're going to update this on an annual basis, part of the annual trustee meeting, keeping actions of the service activities. Uh, build a sample service model, like sample owner's manual, excuse me, that you can bring on your discovery meetings and uh, show off your service early on. But think of these as tabs. Uh, of your owner's manual, board resolution, plan trust documents, adoption agreement, SPD, notices. Again, you can read these on your own when you get the uh, uh, recording of this from Sabrina. Uh, and additional tabs out there. It really uh, was uh, 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 really distinguished me 
and and be, help me to become indispensable. Another great service you can do is to clean the plan out of missing or unresponsive ex-participants. Uh, you know the longer they stay in there, uh, the, the plan sponsor is still a fiduciary over them. Fees are being charged, assessed against them. Uh, the uh, IRS put out safe harbor rules, and there are firms uh, that can uh, provide those safe harbor deposits. I know ABG uh, can uh, talk to you about that. So uh, look into making sure that you're clearing these plans out. Simple first year activities, that monthly check-in. Uh, remember your, pro your uh, competitors are calling them daily. Put that monthly call into them. Group education meetings, one-on-one -on -one with the plan participants. Uh, there's plenty of uh, current uh, uh, copy available from uh, DCIO firms, others, maybe ABG. Uh, uh, articles for their newsletters, things like that. Get a mailing list, email list, if, if that's appropriate. Uh, you know, when there's market calamity, there's nothing better than a reassuring message from their advisor on their 401k. You know, it really helps. And uh, quarterly investment performance reports, of course. Uh, I like to survey employees. Uh, I think it's a great value add. Uh, helps to make sure that the plan is on track based on employee expectations, you'll find again, a sample survey in the uh, e-tool box. And then the annual trustee meeting, again, flow it out with a mindmeister.com type of software out there. And uh, you're again, just like the sales presentation, you're the conductor of the annual trustee meeting. You're coordinating it with all uh, interested partners, date and time, roles, responsibilities. Uh, you're going to initially review the previous year's minutes, and then kick it off. Uh, you know, this is your meeting. Uh, every member's gonna play a role, just like the sales presentation. And uh, this is your relationship though. So your record keeper partner is gonna give you plenty of uh, reporting analytics. I think it's a great opportunity to um, uh, do fiduciary training during the annual trustee meeting too. Uh, one of the best uh, resources to conduct that training is uh, a Department of Labor brochure entitled Meeting Your Fiduciary Responsibilities. Simply review it with them during the annual trustee meeting out there, and you can order that online. Uh, just uh, Google out uh, Department of Labor Meeting Your Fiduciary Responsibilities. Um, check in with the plan sponsor. Uh, give them feedback. I, I, I've said this often, you know, that your competition are calling them, you know, what are they telling them? Ask them, what are you telling my competitions when they call? How, how have we been doing? What feedback do you hear from employees? Check in with them, make sure that, uh, that uh, you really, they understand that you care. Uh, just time efficient ways to stay involved, uh, work oriented uh, meetings, speak at them, give HR payroll a, uh, a letter to uh, insert when somebody gets a raise, you know, uh, I have an advisor I, I've worked with over the years. He's, he ran with this concept I talked to him about by creating these three ring binders, just like an owner's manual for the employer, create an owner's manual for employees. And they call it my Re retirement money binder. And within again, the tabs that you see here, one stop shop for employees. And uh, during uh, annual meetings, uh, you know, replenish, uh, during the one-on-ones, ask them to bring their binder, that good kind of stuff. But uh, again, be creative. Uh, go to Kinko's or your banner, the company you use for banners, and uh, ask them about creating a banner that looks like this, right? They'll ask you to create the file. You're going to have to probably hire a design, graphic designer to do it, but they can print it out. They can post it near the time clock, you know. You can hang brochure holders from it. You can affix a cork board to it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice way. The way that I look at using one of these banners is, look, you're on site quarterly. What are you doing the other 361 days to be memorable, you know? Classic errors. And uh, throughout all the hundreds of advisors I've worked with over the years, thousands, uh, you know, through programs like this, I do witness a lot of the common errors, and really it comes down to not taking themselves seriously, uh, not realizing how valuable their time is, trying to convert non-believers, uh, not communicating their value, not servicing the plan. It's ridiculous. 
and not taking advantage of all the expertise that your ABG partner can bring to bear too. Uh, they're there for you uh, to help you to uh, grow their, your business, your 401k business in uh, any way that uh, is, is uh, possible. Sabrina, that's uh, my comments. I, I know I've been talking a lot here, so I'll pause, uh, turn it back over to you. Maybe there's uh, folks that have a question or two. All right, thank you so much, Chris. Um, we're gonna give you all a moment to ask any questions. One question that we did have was uh, if they could gain access to the slide deck. And I'll shoot us a follow-up email if you are interested in receiving access to that. Um, Chris, you should be able to send me a copy of the slide deck, right, to distribute? Sure will, yep. Perfect, yeah, so we can handle that in the follow-up. Does anyone have any other questions? All right, looks like we're good. Thank you and Chris for all of your efforts throughout this three-part series. Um, you know, I know all of us at ABG have really appreciated our partnership with you. And to everyone that attended today, thank you so, so much for taking time out of your busy schedules. If you missed any of the previous presentations, I'm going to send out a follow-up email where I'll include the links to these. And uh, they can also be found on our YouTube channel or if you scroll through our social media feed. And that should wrap up today's webinar. So thank you again for attending and have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you, Chris.